have seen the interest in cinema at 21st century as a new facet. Also, we want to make films. Is what the part of interest in cinema today. The new facet of interest in cinema at 21st century is wanting to make films ourselves. That's what we discussed. But is it possible for someone to learn cinema? Or is it possible for someone to teach cinema? That's a big question. How do we learn cinema? How, how do we teach cinema? In my opinion, definitely filmmaking cannot be taught. Nobody can teach anyone to be a filmmaker, to become a filmmaker. It's as simple as no one can teach someone to be a writer. No one can teach someone to be a painter. Same way, no one can teach someone to be a filmmaker. But someone can always learn through others how to make films. What am I saying? Is it confusing? What I'm trying to say is Filmmaking can be learned by anyone depending on their own background, education, sensibilities. But teaching is not like that. Teaching is, is, a, is a kind of helping someone to learn. But to learn filmmaking, the first thing, where do we begin? Many times students ask me, sir, I want to be a filmmaker. How do I start learning filmmaking? Even I wonder, where do I start to teach cinema? The first thing is to learn filmmaking. We should understand a bit of history of cinema. It's very, very important. Because if you do not know the history, you do not know the past. If you do not know the past, you will not know the future. You will not understand the present. So first you understand the history of cinema a little bit, how cinema evolved in the last 120 years. Because you are all born in the digital era. Now the war between celluloid and digital is over. You are all the product of digital era. You know nothing about the celluloid era. Celluloid means till the first end of first century of cinema till 15 20 years back all films were made on celluloid film strip celluloid is a cellulose you know, it's a compound it's a chemical compound made of the cellulose nitrate camphor and many other dyes and other ingredients till 1950 nitrate cellulose films are used to record images the big problem with the nitrates nitrate cellulose films are highly inflammable just like that it will get fire. That's, why, that's the reason why we have lost many of our Indian cinema because they were not kept properly. Then later from the nitrate they moved to other cellulose compounds which is not so inflammable. So till 95 till 2000 pe people were using the celluloid. In fact you can see all the images, all the still frames of your shot just looking at a strip. But today, if I tell a young guy who is just in the teenagers or in the early 20s, we can see all the images through our virtual eye without using any gadgets. They might wonder, today, whatever you shoot with your mobile phone or your DSLR cameras, you need a card reader, you need a monitor, you need some screen device to transform that onto. So that way, knowing a bit of history is very, very, very important. Okay, now. That's the history part of it. Now let's start. To start learning filmmaking, where do we really begin? Now we will start by asking basic questions. What is cinema? If I ask, if you're a filmmaker, if I ask you, when I say filmmaker, if you're a director, if I ask you what is cinema, all you would say is cinema is nothing but storytelling. If you're a cameraman, Cinematographer, if I ask you what is cinema, all you would say is cinema is nothing but images, moving images. Ah, who said moving images? And either in digital or in celluloid, image never moves. Do you know that? At any point in time, images are always still. 
it moves only on the screen or not even on the screen it rather moves in our mind in our mind screen at any point of time on the screen you watch only one single frame but you see the movement for that we should know certain basic signs also you know why how do we perceive the movement on the screen when it is nothing but series of still films because we have some physical quality is a biological thing without which we will not be able to perceive that movement it's called persistence of vision you know what is persistence of vision imagine our whatever image we see the lens in our eyes registers it and retains it in our retina even after you move your eye the lens of your eye moves away from the subject still the retina retains that image for one tenth of a second that's why we are able to see the movement to explain it very simply just take a torch light and you know switch, switch it on and make a circle you know, I mean circle it very fast you will see a circle of light you will see the circle of light how, how do you see that the, you see the light in the entire circle how do you see actually the light remains at one point at a particular point in time then how do we see the circle because we have this persistence of vision the same thing happens when you watch images on the screen and we perceive the movement that's why we see we call it moving images actually scientifically technically you cannot call it moving images because none of the image moves it's all still images it moves on the screen no it moves in your mind screen because of certain uh, biological quality we have it in our human system without which it's not possible 